What did you just say? What it do, Ski? It's your boy, Phil34. And today, we're checking out Stargate SG-1 season number four, episode number 10. We are in the double digits for the fourth season. Last episode, I thought it was actually pretty good. I enjoyed the conflict there. You know, Daniel carrying the day, saving it with his words, de-escalation, you know, trying to figure, figure out a way in an unwinnable situation. And it worked out from what we saw. Uh, so with that being said, let's just continue on y'all as always if you enjoy this one Then definitely be sure to smack that chevron and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's just get into it Let's see what's popping today. Okay, we've been chilling on the big on the big plays so far So, uh, you know some smaller scale just sort of one-off stories recently. Uh, give me that good shit yeah, it's, it's getting hot in here so, Is this like a yearly training camp that Teal gets to go through that we weren't aware of? Or are we slaves again? <laughs> I mean in prisoners. Oh for real for real your attention, please. Oh shit! Our He's got the stubbles. Covered in ice. How long have we been here? I am Tilt. Do you not remember? I'm gonna get this guy off me. What? Is... I was starting to think this is like a multiverse episode, but no. We don't belong here. Give Thera her bread. What's up with all the new names? We've been breaking. Yeah, dude, that's yeah, yeah. That's it. first of all, those are crackers, and you got lots of them. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I wanted, and I've got it. Thank you, SG gods. See how it goes. Hope you're doing well, everybody. It's a nice evening we are recording today. So uh, it seems like we just got brainwashed. Teal'c is worrying out whatever whatever happened to him. He's trying to break free. These pumps regulate the overflow. the surface. Now it's your shot. Let's go. One of the stabilizers ruptured. They're so corroded, they can't take the pressure. Okay, so they're with the shits. You all right? Fine. That explosion. Oh, no, no, I'm fine, really. Right, what's Sir, happening back at the base? P3R118. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but our search has turned up nothing. I don't see how SG-1 could have survived this long. But I assure you I'll take full responsibility. Very well. Tell Brenna I want to see her tomorrow. All right, it's a pretty cool world so far. How our new workers are doing. Here we go. Go ahead. Go where? The other side. Carlin. What happened? I don't know you. You said you did. Night sickness affects your mind. That doesn't explain the dreams I've had. Carlin. No, 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 of course not. It's just a dream. Why didn't the memory stamp work on Tilk? I'm sure it was the creature his species carries within them. And even the way Daniel's speaking is slightly different. So she's gonna help him get out. Have you had a chance to look over my plans yet? Brenna, I know you were excited about this. What's happened? Please leave. It's my honor to serve. I'm sure and I love how her. even if they're brainwashed, they're still paired here. up again. She won't even let me. I see you. What are you saying, Major? I can't imagine what scientific reason Major Carter or Dr. Jackson might have had to want to check out those ice fields. There's no way in hell Colonel O'Neill would have let them. Colonel O'Neill believed the risk was acceptable. I can't speak to that, sir. I'm not a diplomat. And I'd say he's a damn liar. He's capping. Here we go. Once Hammond's people are in jeopardy and he realizes someone's lying, because like, look, he, he can, it's just when you get to the lying point and you start down talking Hammond or his people is when he gets real mad and things get good. And who, who is she in her, in her other life? Kagan, I need to ask you something. I'm just wondering if Jonah and Thera were ever my friends. Maybe I don't recognize them because it was years ago. Listen to me. This whole section's gonna blow! Help me get him out of here! What's going on? We've got a pressure overload. We've gotta fix it! It's too late, we have to evacuate. Here and open the primary release valve. We all owe you a debt of gratitude. You risked your lives to save the plant. It, it is, is my, my honor to serve. Hopefully there won't be a next time. Well, if you had listened to me in the first place... Tara. You know, speak your mind. She knows I'm right. There's something else going on. A bigger, grander thing. Dream. You were in a big, glowing puddle. I had the same dream. I cried out loud. <laughs> what did you just say, Jack? It's an expression. <laughs> Look. And so good. Let's meet after lights out. I mean, I will say though, I really like the set design, the concept for this episode. They committed. Also, this planet is definitely going to be on the ban list when it turn when it comes to the gates. What did you do in the mines? I mind. mind. No, what did you do? Uh, look I look for diamonds. I beat the Ender yeah. Dragon. But if you're right, then everything we remember about this place is a lie. It's like a facade. Break the we matrix. Have to keep this to ourselves. I was gonna say their technology must not, must must not be that great, but we don't know how long Sir? it's been as well. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, look, Hammond's hurt. Well, we must have something they want, or they wouldn't have proposed trade. 
gate addresses. I understand that. They're surrounded they want by ice. certain address? As far as I... A lot of numbers and letters keep popping into my mind. SG-1, DHD, GDO. <laughs> something in the wall? That means something. Am I missing something? I don't know yet. Carlin. I'm sorry, Kagan. I don't understand. His condition's getting worse. Teal is down for the count. But he wakes. There's a man. He was He's bald. bald and wears a short <laughs> sleeve shirt. I think his name is Homer. That is so good. Bell. That is so good. This guy just said Homer. Yep. I'm dead. Multiverse planet feelings. kissing her. Uh, feelings. I remember feeling feelings. For me? No, for Tor. <laughs> Administrator, I think they're starting to remember. Their brain chemistry is slightly different than ours. That could be the reason. But we can restamp them. Yeah. No. No, I think it's time they found out what it was like outside. They passed judgment on us, Brenna. I'm simply doing the same. Brenna. Yeah. Well, we've been having a really bad luck this past uh, season and a bit with going to planets. A lot of them turn out to be head asses. You know, you don't find many knocks, you know? <laughs> I'm taking season one for granted. <laughs> While we were on the Grand Tour, Carter spotted some ventilation shafts coming out of... You were supposed to stay with your escort. See how you wouldn't want outsiders to know about the slave labor force you keep underground. I will not recommend trade with a culture that enslaves its own people. Thank you, Jack. This system of government has allowed our culture to survive an ice age. Damn, you got got, guys. Okay, so maybe it hasn't been that long. Jonah, Thera, report to Brenna's quarters. What are you doing? Good orders to take him up to Brenna's room. What's the matter with him? He's dying. Kill Noreen. I'm not sure what it means, but I think it's kind of meditation. He has to do it every day or he gets sick. As you've begun to suspect, all of you have had your memories altered, and your friend here is named Teal'c. Where does Homer fit in? <laughs> you are all they sent down. You don't belong here. You need to return to your own world once you get home. Yes, you're there. Oh, you didn't think Administrator that Calder. Yikes. Yikes. What's up with the all red get up? But Leather too? <laughs> it's time you found out about the surface of this planet. Let's go. Teal'c? You all right? I am. When I removed my bandages and realized I was unlike the rest of you, I began to remember. I placed myself in a deep state of Kelnor Reem for the night. Brenna should be all right if we can get her the, uh... You know something? We've got you as a hostage. I don't see a problem. Jonah. Jack. We have to tell these people what's happening here. They shot Brenna! <laughs> it's true! Listen to me! Fucking weasel. There is a big dome city up there, full of people you serve! I was a supervisor in the mines. No! <laughs> No ice, no snow. You've accomplished nothing. That's why we're gonna offer them a better place. You and your people can do your own shoveling for a while. You're destroying a way of life. That's a shame. That bald man you were trying to remember? General Hammond. Right. He's from Texas, you know. It's all coming back. Gonna be hearing this theme a lot more. And that was my reaction video to Stargate SG-1 season four, episode number 10. Whenever we start an episode where we're just like already in the middle of an, an, an adventure, uh, a mission, or something that's gone, you know, gone left. It's fine, they, they, go, they decide to go a bold route. I think this was one of those episodes. I really dig what they did here with uh, the whole concept. I thought the execution was actually pretty good. Just starting off randomly in these, these like, uh, in these, in this working camp, uh, we didn't really know what was going on. And I think this was a, this was great to see the actors obviously playing different personalities uh, and then, you know, slightly incorporating, you know, some of their, uh, I guess, some of their mannerisms and lingo as the episode went along from, you know, for crying out loud, for Daniel sort of like, of course, of course, you know, Sam solving her equations and such, even when she's brainwashed. So, um, I thought this was definitely an interesting episode here. I love the set design. I thought they really committed to the look, the feel, and it made this episode definitely stand out with regards to that. I also like the, the general story here. They get to this planet, they think they're gonna have, you know, another technological swap -a uh, where they can build ties with each other. And what ended up happening was they, they're enslaving, you know, a portion of the race's workers to maintain their society. And obviously that's not the go-to team got got. So I actually liked the non-linear storytelling in this episode here. I thought it lent some favors. And I also thought uh, the directing here, it's, you know what this reminded me of? I was thinking about it. It reminded me of, uh, yeah, that's exactly what this reminded me of. I was thinking about, I was like, the title is Escape of My Mind, Snowpiercer. I was thinking the day after tomorrow, Snowpiercer, because of this whole, you know, 
uh, the, the tough terrain, the snowy climate here. The fact that they're using this labor force and like, the weather conditions as a motive in helping their society. So it reminded me of those films a little bit here. Overall, I did, I definitely did enjoy this episode. This was much more, I don't know what the replayability is, is gonna be on this episode, but I think off of first watch, definitely an enjoyable one just for the different take. Uh, the performances here I thought were pretty strong, especially them playing out of character. Still sliding in some of those like, you know, classic jokes like Homer, that was really good. Uh, you know, you know, General Hammond, some of their, you know, their go-to lines and their catchphrases here, if you want to say it. That was my reaction video to Stargate SG-14X10. It's gonna be interesting to see now, like this is two planets in a, in a decent time frame. We haven't been having the best luck with, with planets that we've been negating to. So I'm hoping that the next the next people that we meet up with, uh, we can actually get some deals going on. Also, what was the gun they were using? I didn't mean to, I, I, I was just sort of, you know, watching that, but in my head, I'm just thinking, I'm like, what is up with this like toy gun he has? Prestige 10 Call of Duty, you know, Duck hunt gun. What is that? I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe they're not that advanced as we think. Who knows? And I really did love some of those encounters. Some of those scenes were really great. I thought the one with Hammond just staring off into the window with Fraser sucks. That didn't plot. That plot didn't go anywhere. Obviously, I think he was gearing up to have some special team going with Fraser, but they didn't really go anywhere with that. It's fine. Uh, they wanted to just you know have them figure out the situation themselves. We didn't see them leave, but he liberated them and then that's where they're ending it off. So I'm cool with that again. Um, just with the story structure, I think it was fine that we didn't necessarily see everything, but um, yeah, I like this episode. I definitely enjoyed it here. Even if even if our, our minds mangled, we're still coming together to save the day. So I really did enjoy what they did here. And I thought the directing uh, and just the way they piece this together with some of those shots some in the more serious exchanges, uh, whether it was, you know, Jack, and Sam confessing their feelings, even in a different, you know, even though they're different people, the feelings still stayed. I, I did enjoy that here. I like the Hammond engagement. I like the Hammond scene. That was Stargate SG-1 season four, episode 10. What do you think about this episode? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. I feel like this might be like a hit or miss for some people, but for me, I think this was a hit. With that being said, guys, that was it for this one. I will see you for 4X11 very soon. But with that being said, I'll catch you all in the next one. Love you, love you.